My earliest memory as an artist is uh, when I was in, I think, grade two or grade three. I painted uh, an old car and an antique car, and I loved antique cars when I was a little kid. And uh, so I painted this car. I did it in, in, in not painted, I, I crayoned it, and I still have it. It's up on the wall in the corner. And uh, I was really happy with that. And I think that's when I decided I wanted to be an artist. But I was always afraid of the unknown. And the schools I went to didn't have art classes once I got out of elementary school. And I didn't know where to go or what to do or how to, how to deal with that. That pathway to becoming an artist was very difficult because every time I went to do something. I always did it sort of as a hobby. So I went to university, I have a business degree, and then I decided I needed to work on my MBA. I said, N so I was accepted to, to Berkeley, and I was going to go to Berkeley for my MBA. And I said, oh, I, can't, I don't think I can deal with another quantitative methods class. And um, so I, d I was saving up money. I decided to, to take some classes in, in, in art and the school I went to. So I took some art classes and I really, this was fantastic, this was great. A long convoluted story, I ended up in Nova Scotia running a, a, a chain of stores. I had a chain of department stores. I did this, this was uh, again painting as a side, you know, taking stuff. I took classes with Nova Scotia School of Art and Design and did that, but it was always like as a hobby I wanted to do this and taking more drawing classes. And uh, so I came down here and I said, I'm going to take a year off and just do what I want to do and paint. And if at the end of the year I had some kind of sign, uh, that, would be, that would be great. So at the end of the year I won a prize in an art show and for a horrible painting, but anyway, I won a prize and that kept me going. So that was, that was good. Well, my painting techniques that was a long haul <laughs> for me. It was really difficult. I started off painting in school. Couldn't do anything. Um, I, uh, it was like just putting paint on canvas. It was, what I found was dealing with the old masters was great because you, I like looking at Van Eyck, Van Eyck the glazes that they did were amazing. So I, what I did was I tried to copy their glazing, so I would do that. And then I would, see, if you go up to the Ringling, uh, you can see the Rubens there, and I would see the way he had put his color down. And again, because it's transparent, you can see these brush strokes, like he's got these, those paintings are phenomenal, but they were done as cartoons for tapestries. So I started to see how they were painting and then reading, um, like Michelangelo sending paintings to Florence and wanting them to be out in the sun and uh, so that they would be bleached because when you leave an oil painting in the, in the dark, in the shade, in the dark, in a closet, the oil will go yellow. So um, you take the painting and put it outside in the sun. So then it bleaches it. So as I was reading, I started changing my style. And one of the things that was the hardest was a lot of people use um, painting mediums. The basic medium is one-third uh, linseed oil, one-third um, paint thinner or uh, turpentine, and one-third varnish. And that will be the thing that sets it. And I looked at all the old varnishes, and they, it was just so complicated. And I found that the paintings became sticky and uh, they were hard to, it was hard to put. So now I don't paint with anything except linseed oil and the pigment. And I take the pigment out of the tube, I don't mix it with anything. And so I have a method that's a little different. And I also learned that a lot of the times the artists, the older artists, only painted one color at a time. So I tend to do that. Uh, when I say one color at a time, I'll mix, I have a painting table. So I'll mix my paint on there rather than doing it on the palette. And then I'll put it onto my palette. But I'll mix the color up that I want. And then I'll paint with that. So what I do is rather than blending the paints on the canvas, I only blend the colors. And then I put them on the canvas. And I may make them thinner so they basically become a veil or a glaze or a scumble, depending on what the color is. But I'll put that on. I'll let that dry. And then I put another 
paint on, another color on. And the thing I found amazing, being in Florida to me is really, really important because I have sunshine. And sunshine is great for drawing paintings. So I put my paintings in the sun every day. So if I paint in the morning, I can paint in the morning, I put it out in the sun, and by, the, by, by night it's dry. But if you use any other kind of oil, it won't work. Well, I think I was just unhappy with what I could get. And um, when I say I was unhappy, they either, if I was going to spend money on them, they were still, uh, they tended to clash. I couldn't find a painting, a frame that would work well. Um, I didn't like the, um, the color. They didn't, for example, like the painting that's behind you, I have, uh, I'm working on that frame right now. But I usually build the frame and the painting together. I sort of do them as they go along or I have an idea of what it's going to be like. So I try, try to do that. Um, it makes a big difference on a painting. You can take a lousy painting and put on a nice frame that looks better. And you can take a good painting and put a good paint frame on it and it looks fantastic. And if you've got a fantastic painting and a fantastic frame, it's, it's mind boggling. I feel painting has to have a purpose. We had, uh, before the camera, the artist had many, many purposes. We were basically re replaced where we were the, the camera for tourists that were traveling to a country that either bring an artist with them or there'd be local artists that would sell paintings, views like Cataletto that you'd buy views of, of Venice or something like that and bring them home with you. Um, when the camera was, or we'd be a portrait artist, or but there were a few artists that sort of rose above all that. We've lost, as, as artists, we've lost a lot of our purpose in life. And I feel that what's happened is that um, the artist started to analyze the image when you no longer, when the camera came, what were they going to do? Would you just reproduce what the camera was doing? Why would you do that? Uh, and a lot of artists today, figurative artists, realist artists, that's what they do. I, go, I don't understand what they're doing, why they're doing it, because you can get a good photographer and do, the, do the, the picture or the painting and you have no question. You know, it's, it's, it, there are certain things that painters can do, they can make it look more relaxed or whatever, but I think in some ways painting is anachronistic. You know, it's, people don't uh, learn it anymore and they're using technology and it's, it's uh, I, I think I'm kind of, um, you know, it's the end of the line for paint, oil painting perhaps. The, the, the artist started to analyze what went on. So you have the, the impressionists which were analyzing color and then you started looking at the effects of the color and then you had, you know, the 20th century where you've got uh, the breakdown into color fields and planes and interesting images and uh, so to me that was very important I like I like modern art but I don't want to do it I to, to me it's like done and a lot of the other thing that I find strange is a lot of artists are doing it for themselves like their emotion so their emotional paintings those you can communicate but you may not be able to have an audience which understands you're communicating with yourself so what I wanted to do with my work as I painted, I started to, to, to think I want a purpose and a meaning in my paintings. I don't just want to paint views or just people or portraits. And that's how my interest in science, I've, I've started to, to develop theories, I've not started to develop, I've developed theories on um, the earth and how the earth was formed and, and on electricity and on light and on um, uh, time and uh, so I have all these things so usually my paintings relate to those things. I hope that they look a bit strange and that people would be curious about what the painting is about. What is going on in this painting? Why is this happening? Um, the thing that I found about the general public is they're not usually very curious. They just go, oh, well, that's interesting, what a peculiar thing that is. But they don't want to know why. My goal is to try to do something that will get 
a few people, one person to look at this and say, okay, what's going on there? And uh, so that's usually what my, my paintings are about.